Like every great story, today's starts out in Harbor Freight. These ammo boxes catch my eye every time I'm there, and I've been wanting to build a stove that's wood burning, that'll fit in here. And I know I'm not the first person to build a wood stove in an ammo box, but I want a full rocket stove that doesn't skimp on performance. So I've been messing around in the CAD system. I think I have a design that'll work. I'm gonna order the parts up from Send, Cut, Send. We'll put them together and see if this actually works. Well, what have I done? I mean, the parts are here and somehow I've got to figure out how all the stuff in here is gonna fit into here. Let's look at what we got. Now that it's out of the box, that's not so bad. We've got our bent pieces here. We've got a few more flat pieces there. It's all nice and thick material. And it's amazing how well this was packaged, especially given that it's free shipping. Now, if you see projects like this and you think, I don't know how to work CAD or this all looks too complicated, it's really not. I have a couple tutorials I did full start to finish on how to design and order your own parts like this. You can check those out linked in the description as well as a 15% off discount code to send, cut, send. Let me show you how this folding mechanism is gonna to work to fit everything down in the box. So this is the side of the main inlet tube and the combustion will happen here. And then this is part of the chimney. So there's these two threaded holes and I'm gonna put a socket head cap screw in each to act as a pin. And that will sit right here and ride in these slots. So when it's in use, it'll sit down in that groove right there and keep everything locked in vertically. And then when you wanna fold it up, you just slide that up and then rotate it around. Well, here's where I uh, made an error. I didn't leave enough clearance for that pin as I folded it up. And this kind of thing can happen. I've designed a lot of parts and, you know, just because I make internet videos uh, about this type of stuff doesn't mean that I'm saying I do it perfectly every time. And here's an example of that. So we need to grind a little bit of clearance away right there. Well, now I can start to piece together this main inlet tube and firebox, and I'm just using a different piece to act as a shim, so I have my whole joint open to weld up. Let's talk a little bit about the design here. I didn't use any tab and slot. I didn't really need it. You saw how easily I could tack that up. And this bend right there uh, just squares everything up without having to use any tooling. So it's uh, pretty nice whenever you can do that. Now these little feet right here are gonna give a little space off the bottom of the ammo box. And I've got some clearance on either side to put some of this fiberglass insulation in. I just got off Amazon. So my hope is that the outside of the ammo box is cool while I use it. Now before the top goes on, I have this little throttle plate that's gonna go in here so I can control my airflow. Now I'll tack up the folding chimney. Now the last piece I need to tack together is this chute that'll automatically feed the wood down into the firebox. It was a little bit of a snug fit and I think that's because there was just a slight amount of spring back on it. So once that has the top welded on, it should keep everything nice and straight. Now before I put the top on, I need to install this little lid and this is on here to prevent air from being drawn in, at least too much air from being drawn in where the wood feeds because I want the majority of the air to come in through the bottom and that's gonna give me a more efficient flame. If my wife watches this and sees me welding in this shirt, oh, I'm gonna hear about it. This is one of her favorites. Well, now it's time to start welding these parts out and the majority of the welds here are outside corner joints. Notice I'm just running a straight stringer all the way across. I'm not using any kind of manipulation. This allows me to turn my settings up a little bit higher, which allows me to move faster and put less heat into the part. I just made a video about this uh, explaining how that works, but uh, this puts a lot less heat in than if you do a lot of manipulation to like stack dimes. 
Also, you can get really good penetration. That doesn't matter too much here, but you can see how nice and consistent that penetration was. On this part, there's a very small amount of material next to the weld, and I don't want that to warp and distort. So I'm just going to use these little clamps. These are great at Harbor Freight. Every time there's those 30% off, anything under 10 bucks uh, coupons, I get another pair of these. But uh, I'll just clamp some scrap aluminum plate right there, and that will absorb the extra heat as I run my weld. Now, if you're just getting started with welding and fabrication and you want to learn faster, uh, check out my online courses. I keep them as affordable as possible, 39 bucks for a course. And I'll walk you through step by step a lot of hands on exercises so you can learn a lot faster than you would just by watching YouTube videos. I could leave these as welded, but I'll just do a quick blend right here. It'll only take a couple of minutes and leave it nice and smooth. You could use a lot of different tools to cut the hole in the ammo can. I like these small pneumatic tools because they just give a little better control. To hold the stove in place in the can, I want to use some plug welds on the bottom where those feet rest, and so I'm going to mark the locations and drill a couple holes, and a plug weld basically just fill in that hole and weld the top surface to the bottom. So I work better in a tidy shop and I've got my mid project mess here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. And then I need one more piece to sit down in here and I'm going to use some expanded metal. And this will just be a small piece to keep the wood from falling clear down to the bottom of the firebox. So I want to have really good airflow from that bottom up through. So a small bent piece like this will do the trick. These socket head cap screws are just going to act as pins and I don't want them coming loose so I'm just going to use some Miller Blue Loctite. I think simple is best in a lot of cases and so I'm just using two cross pieces right here for the pan holder on top. I like how it's looking. I just need to check and make sure it folds up okay before I stuff this thing in the box. I lined the box with this fiberglass insulation from Amazon. The cheapest stuff I could get was an inch thick and I stripped it down to be about half an inch thick, just kind of split it in half. And I thought I was going to drop this in, but like most projects, there's some step you don't expect to be a challenge. And this is like the first time I changed a diaper is what it feels like. I mean, five kids later, I, I kind of have it down, but not this. Um, I obviously did better in shop class than home ec because it turned into an episode of the Three Stooges here trying to get this packed in. And I'm not super pumped about how it went. But in the end, I got it stuffed in there and I think it'll work okay. So here are the plug welds on the bottom. Those are the little feet just coming through those holes I drilled in the bottom and I'll do this just to hold it in place. It doesn't need a lot of strength, just something to keep it uh, still. And I know it's not ideal to just weld through the paint, but I wanted to leave as much paint intact as I could, but I mean, you can just smell that through the screen with that smoke coming out. I, uh, I wouldn't do more than just a couple of tacks and probably wouldn't even uh, recommend that you do that. 